What we're looking at today is getting your server set up with SSL. Now, I'm going to do this with uh, Node.js as my example, but it works equally well with Ruby, Python, you know, whatever it is, because a lot of this is going through the process of creating the certificates, getting them signed, testing them, and honestly, if you just get cloned the repository that is the example we're using here, um, you'll be able to do all that and feel confident that when you go to purchase your certificate, you'll be able to use it. Now, Sometime this year, supposedly in the summer, Mozilla is going to be giving free certificates to everyone. And there's going to be, like for Node, there's going to be an NPM module that you just put in your Express or Connect stack, and it's going to automatically validate the domain. If the domain validates, you get a certificate. There are some cases where you might still want to purchase one, like now, when that's not happened yet. Um, and also, I imagine that those certificates may have some limitations that make purchasing the $10 certificate is still a viable option. So let's talk about uh, just using a, a, a cheap SSL certificate from name.com and I'll actually go through that purchase process and show you. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is create a private key that the server is going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this. I created a directory certs server. That's where I'm going to put the certificates that actually belong to the server. And then I'm doing uh, gen RSA, so creating RSA uh, key. And this is a private key and it's 2048 bits. Next, I'm going to create a certificate signing request. Now this is just a temporary file, but this is what we give to the root certificate authority, such as rapid SSL through name.com. And uh, I'm not being paid by them or anything. I just happen to like them. It's a very simple process. So, um, But that certificate request is taken. It has some of the bits from the key and then it or generated by the key and then it uses those bits to generate a certificate. Now, I am actually going to change this a little bit. I'll explain what these are. Uh, the country over here, US, two letter code, standard. ST, state, providence, whatever you call it in your you know, country where you live, uh, it needs to be all spelled out. So Utah is Utah, not UT. L is locality, that means city in the United States, so Provo for me. O is organization, so the business name or organization name, and then OU is the organization unit, meaning like the sub department, say the sales department or something like that. Don't really know why exactly you need to use that, but it's there. Uh, I normally don't include it, but I will in this case. And then I actually do want to generate an SSL certificate for local.ldsconnect.org. Uh, and I'll explain that in just a minute. It's, it's for testing and demo purposes, but it makes the testing and demos easier to use a real certificate, as you'll soon see. Now, I've generated that signing request. I've explained some of that uh, stuff to you, the special circumstances. Now, I'll go ahead and just show you what we have, just the two files, the private key, the signing request. Now, I'm gonna clone this repository that has a couple of scripts in it, as well as a server. So this on its own is zero config. If I just go in there, install and run it, it works. Uh, but we are gonna make a couple changes. First, I'm going to copy my two uh, certificate files, the, the private key and the signing request into the directory in there. It's got the same directory structure as this example. I, I paired them together on purpose, of course. Uh, now I'm going to show you, this is the command that's going to get run. This would typically get run on the, for example, rapid SSL or GeoTrust server. Is that they get your CSR as their input file. And then they take their private key, not for the high level root certificate authority, but for uh, probably a medium tier that's that's uh, not actually trusted by the browser when you're talking about the cheap ones. So they take that medium tier private key 
and they they have uh, their certificate that they've gone through this process with a higher tier key. That that certificate was created in, in the same process that we're going through right now. So you'll see by the end how that happens. And that certificate acts as the bridge, the intermediary. So that certificate is something that the browser doesn't have built in. When you download Chrome, the, this, that intermediary certificate is not included, but it is signed by a certificate that has been included. And this will generate, the out file here, generates your certificate and it keeps the chain of trust. So it says your certificate that it creates has some bits from your private key that identifies your server, plus it has some bits from the private key of this intermediary certificate with the intermediary certificate in the chain that has been signed by the private key of the higher level uh, root certificate authority. So hopefully that made sense. That's kind of the process. So we're about to create our actual certificate by running this command. So here we go. And that looks correct. I need to do npm install, I think. Yep. And then run the server. All right, now you'll notice the server, uh, this example is using a domain name that isn't the one that I signed for. So I can expect to see errors on two accounts. So we'll talk about those in just a second. So here we are, I'm at an error page. Now this is not a connection error. This is a privacy error. If I click on this icon here, you can see the certificate does not match the URL. So I created a certificate for local.ldsconnect.org. I'm using the URL local.helloworld3000.com. Doesn't match. Server certificate is not trusted. That bogus root CA that I already had in the repository, I just created that in the same way that I created the certificate that is being signed. So there is no level of trust that goes back to what the browser knows, right? If I take a look at the certificate more closely, again, you can see example.com is that root CA, the intermediary root CA that's bogus that I created, which is what signed local.ldsconnect.org. It doesn't go back up to the chain to a reputable source. So those are the two errors. So this is safe to ignore for the purposes of this tutorial. I go through and here I am, encrypted connection with my server. So I'll show you the server a little bit we'll move right on into purchasing the certificate, review this process again, and check out what the certificate looks like when it is properly verified from a high level, actual non-bogus root authority. So starting at the top of the file, I'm gonna skip over most of this and just talk about the options. They're what's important. The key is my private key. This doesn't get sent to the browser. However, this list of certificate authorities that I include, because sometimes the cheaper the certificate, the more certificate authorities you have to include as intermediaries. Um, so sometimes you have to include a few, but this, this certificate is actually going to get sent to the browser along with the certificate that is representative of the website. That way it can say, hey, here's my certificate, but you probably won't recognize the person that signed it. Here's their certificate. You might recognize who signed them. And so it'll just crawl that chain until it gets to a certificate that was bundled with the browser at the time it was installed. Same thing is true of mobile devices and certain applications or other servers. Uh, request cert is an option that is just used for peer certificate validation, which is fun and something else entirely and the reject unauthorized goes along with that so that's another tutorial for another day and then I don't want to explain all of this but in fine I like to create my server with my server options use an IP checking service so that for my own personal 
development practice, I can have it print out the real IP address if I'm working on a, on a server that's actually on the internet. And, and instead of doing what a lot of people do where they require their Connector Express app and attach it directly at the create server stage, I like to create that separately so that if I'm doing something where the, the app needs to inspect the internals of the server or needs to know the host and port name in advance, I can actually pass that in and, and create the Connector Express app with those things in the, the scope that are available to it. And the, off the top of my head, the, the biggest use case of that is if you wanted to have secure WebSockets. Um, you would actually need to pass the server instance into your application logic so that it could then attach itself to the server raw um, with the upgrade request event. TMI. Anyway, we're out of there. So I'm feeling really confident that this server uh, doesn't have any typos in it. I looked at it, you know, three times now, twice on the command line, once in the browser. So I know that my certificate is what I wanted. And I, I'm very confident that if I purchase a real certificate, I've gone through the process, I know how to use it with my server. So now we're gonna go through the actual process. Going to name.com. Actually, I wanna go to name.com slash SSL. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, cheapo certificate to my cart. One year, that's all I want. So I chopped out the part where it asked for my credit card, but it was there. I need to click on set up products now, and I'm gonna go ahead and set up my new certificate. And I want it to be local ldsconnect.org. Next step. Verify my contact information. This is where I need to put in the certificate signing request that I just created. So I'm gonna get out of this directory and go back to where I was. Certs temp my server CSR. So I just copy and paste that in here. And then I'm gonna go ahead to the next step here. All right, so because I host my, that particular domain is, is with name.com, uh, they were able to automatically validate the ownership of the domain. My certificate has been issued. There, I just got another email about it. So this is my server certificate. Since this is the development certificate anyway, I'm not at all worried about you all seeing it. So this is going to be my server CRT.pim. I'm just gonna paste it in there. And that's that. And then they're very nice because they give me that intermediate certificate uh, right here. I don't have to go anywhere else to download it. On some of the other services I've used, it's a little more complicated. All right, so there's the intermediate. So I need to save that one. Oops. Um, and now I will save this root CA. Um, and I don't know why they're having me include the root CA because I would think that that would be in the browser already, but maybe this is one of those cases of uh, just in case. So I'll include it, can't hurt, right? Now that I've got that, I think I'm, I'm done with this process, I just need to test again. So I'm gonna, again, copy these into my example directory, and I'm gonna modify that server so that I have intermediate here. I'm gonna try with just the intermediate first to see if it works, and then if it doesn't, then I'll go ahead and add the root as well. But my guess is that the browser probably already has the root, and it's just a convenience for um, various aspects of server programming. So I'm gonna comment this one out just to see 
if the intermediate alone is good enough. And also, instead of accessing it at local.helloworld3000, I'm going to access it at the domain that I actually paid for, which is ldsconnect.org, and then 8043. All right, and no problems whatsoever. I didn't need the root certificate. It's already included in the browser. Identity is verified. I can view the certificate information. Oh, and then there's a couple of things in the comments field. Like the more you pay for the certificate, like the more information gets verified. Like sometimes they'll actually call you up on the phone or you got to fax in a driver's license or, you know, something like that, depending on what level of uh, security or, you know, you're, you're purchasing. Uh, oh, and see here, instead of example.com, this rapid SSL is the intermediate certificate. And then this GeoTrust Global is the one that is included in the browser. So now we have a complete chain that works. So hopefully that gave you the confidence that you can start using SSL today. And I do hope to update this when I actually see Mozilla uh, get together that let's encrypt.org and, and give you another example of how to do it with the free stuff. But anyway, uh, here you are, please encrypt. If this was useful for you, please go ahead and give that little thumbs up button a nice click. Also, you'll see the notes are in the comments section down below. You can either at the end of the article or right up at the top, give it a like, tweet, plus one, whatever. Thanks.